I joined the Kotlin project like five years ago, and at first I was a developer in the compiler, but now I'm more interested in writing a book about Kotlin, Kotlin in action, and uh, giving talks. So let's start with Kotlin. Uh, my first question, uh, who has used it already, or who has written something in Kotlin? Okay, who at least played with it somehow? Maybe online or so, some other things? Okay, uh, who have heard about it? Okay, so most of you have heard that it is exist. It's good, uh, at least. So, Kotlin is a programming language. Basically, it's modern and pragmatic. And uh, these things are important for us, and this is what we are going to talk about today. Why it's pragmatic and why it's modern. Let's start with pragmatic issues and leave the world modern till the end of the talk. So, it's from JetBrains. And you can really expect quite a good tooling for the language, because JetBrains is a company who created IntelliJ, and uh, there is a really good plugin support from scratch, and you can use all your favorite actions in IDE that you use for Java, that works with Kotlin as well. Another thing that is very important for us, and uh, this thing actually differs Kotlin from some other JVM languages, modern JVM languages, is this ability to being very easily mixed with Java code. So for every language, uh, so Kotlin code is compiled to Java bytecode, and for sure you can, you can use it in, uh, your, in your project. And uh, that's true, that's an easy thing to do from every JVM language, is to call Java code from it. So, so it, it, it works. Uh, anyway, because it is compiled to the same bytecode, you can use Java functions, Java libraries, etc. But with Kotlin, it works in the other direction with ease. And that does, doesn't happen at once. So it doesn't happen like out of nothing. Really created a language in, that, in this way, so it was one of our very important requirements to be able to use Kotlin code from Java code as well. And that and that means you can add it very slowly to your Java project. And uh, to continue developing existing Java applications with Kotlin. And that was one of our initial goals. So one of our goals was to, uh, for, as JetBrains was to continue developing IntelliJ ID in Kotlin. But IntelliJ ID is, is written as like lots of Java files, lots of Java code. And we wanted a language that can be easily used uh, while you continue your development. And that's how it works now. So now, the, uh, some of new code for IntelliJ is written in Kotlin. Why, it is, wh wh why it's this way? One of the important characteristics of Kotlin is there is no Kotlin standard library. There is no such thing as Kotlin SDK. Uh, Kotlin standard library is Java standard library, but with a bunch of extensions. So we do not re-implement every collection, every list or set, etc. We do not create our own better collection library. We just use Java's. We improve it in a, in a way. Uh, but basically, there is the same collection. And that for us means actually two things. At first, you have rather small Java runtime. That's very important for Android for developing for Android, for, for instance. And on the other hand, you have this rather easy Java interop, because interoperability, because you just, uh, you, you do not have to convert one uh, standard library collection to another, another one, That's, that should be clear. Uh, one more thing, uh, it's, it happened to be very Android friendly. So that's important thing that we do not want to say that it's a language for Android, that's not the case. But now it turns out that it fits there brilliantly. Because it has small runtime, because Android is stick for, for uh, support for all the devices. And, that, that's, and another reason is now Android Studio is based on IntelliJ, that means that all the Kotlin support works great in Android Studio, and so on. Yeah, and uh, because of small runtime, adding Kotlin to your project, to your application, is not as difficult as it could be for other languages. So it was about the pragmatic side of things. And now let's move on and look at another thing, 
uh, it's about being a modern language. Of course, it's like a buzzword nowadays, and uh, uh, so you can say, yeah, what, what, again, about this modern thing, but honestly, would you uh, call Java 8 a modern language? Doubtfully, yeah. So uh, it's a good language for sure. Java is a great language. We all like know it and we use it every day. But it uh, can so to, to make Java actually a modern language, you have to write it. You have to change it from scratch, and that that's a difficult thing to do. So uh, at the rest of my talk, I will cover all this all this thing, this being a modern language, and uh, it's not specifically for Kotlin. So many other more other like uh, nowadays, language nowadays are modern as well, and uh, they all share the same characteristic: uh, this ex conciseness, safe, safety, and expressiveness. And uh, another thing is that we do not just describe Kotlin as having this characteristic. It is we we look at it with the, in a comparison with Java. So Kotlin is more concise than Java, safer than Java, and more expressive than Java. Let's, and it is my agenda for the rest of the talk, actually. We'll look at these three things in turn. Let's start with the concise. So why, why, why it's concise? Why do we call it? Okay, this is, a, I would say, standard Java data class. And uh, it does actually nothing. It just stores the data. And uh, we would like to express the same idea in a in a shorter fashion. And uh, now uh, we, ha we have the tool that can automatically convert Java code to Kotlin. So we can use this tool for this example. And uh, here what we have. And uh, the thing is that under the hood, this code is absolutely the same. So in the previous uh, code, you, you saw that there is a class with a constructor to fields and to getters. In Kotlin, we do not have this notion, this concept of fields. We do not uh, work with fields directly. We work with properties. But under the hood, they're exactly the same code. And you can use it from Java code very simply, very easily. Another thing uh, in Kotlin, you can add this small modifier, data, and uh, after that, you will have uh, some use useful methods will be generated for you for usability. Uh, it's equals hash code into string, and uh, it's really convenient to to have auto generated equals and hash code for for your data class because usually you you do not compare it by reference. You want to compare it by by what it contains. So again, it's it's about conciseness. So uh, you can declare several such classes in one files, and that means that uh, all your Java code that you have to like, declare every class in a separate, separate file, and now it looks much more readable, much more easy to share with your colleagues to, to say, yes, see, I created 20 new classes that does describe the data. Another example of Kotlin being concise, so there is, uh, there is Java code, and uh, let's say we have uh, degrees, and we want to initialize two, two variables, description and color. Color is, okay, is like an enum of, of some colors. And uh, in Java code, we can, we can write it very explicitly. So we say that if degrees is less than, I don't know, how, how do you feel cold? Maybe it should be less than 10 in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Russia, so for me it's like, <laughs> Less than minus five will be okay as well. <laughs> so uh, if it's less than some va then a value is cold, then if it's like less than a va value is mild, etc. And you see that we initialize two fields in these three branches. But what's the problem? Ah, at first, let's, let's convert it. There is another thing how we can do that. You can just copy paste your Java code into IntelliJ into Kotlin file and it will, will automatically convert it. So this, look, this code looks the same. You see, it's, it's the same code, but it, it misses semicolon, but actually it's, it's, it's very similar. And uh, there is an example when an automatic Java to Kotlin conversion wouldn't get you the idiomatic code. So it's a very useful tool, but to, to be able to write more concise code, you often, you often want to do better. 
you want to, to do more. And uh, what's our problem here? You see there is this variable declaration and we uh, repeat it for several times. That's not very convenient. Yes, we want to avoid it. And in Kotlin, you can, uh, you can do that. Actually, in Kotlin, if is an expression that returns a value. So you can, in, uh, you can return a value in each branch. Another thing you can do, you see you have to initialize two variables. So you can return a pair of values in each case. So we can simplify it to this. Yes, and now we have this description uh, only once when, when we dec declare it. And we, we return the pair of values for each case. So it's, it's better. But we can do more. At first, uh, do we need the types? Kotlin is a statically typed language. That was very important thing for us when we created it because it's much easier to, to create huge systems, to create big, big projects when you have a work with a statically typed language. So uh, in Kotlin, every expression has a type, but we can omit these types very often. We do not have to explicitly write them all the time. So in this case, you can just say declare two variables and the compiler will infer that the, the, the type of the first variable is string, the second one is color. So when it's clear from the context, you can omit them. Of course, you can put them explicitly if you want, if it somehow improves the readability, but that's not always the case. And very often we would be happy to omit all these verbosity in types. Okay, but then you can do even even better. Uh, in Kotlin, we have this when expression that is a very, to some extent, it is analog to switch, but is more powerful. Maybe someone here knows a little bit of Scala. Okay, so in Kotlin, in Scala, you know, there is a concept of pattern matching. We do not have the full power of pattern matching. We have a much similar, simpler concept. And uh, it turns out that Actually, at first we wanted to create something similar, but then it turned out that having a simpler concept covers the majority of the cases. So we just dropped the very non-trivial parts of of like matching, of like creating your uh, your own, or patterns and so on. So it's much simpler, but uh, it works. In this case, we have we have this code, and uh, again, it's it's much much simpler to look at. And uh, another thing, in Kotlin, we, we can create pairs uh, by this calling a constructor. Actually, this calls a constructor. In Kotlin, we do not have new keyword. You just call the constructor directly. But we can, uh, it's common to use this uh, two function, this two construct. And uh, our final code looks like this. Yeah, so we simplified the initial example. I'll show you the whole picture. So at first we had this uh, very direct Java code, and the other one is Kotlin version, is simpler. And of course it's not a big deal, so it, it, was, it was very clear what's going on here. It's clear what's going on in the second version. But on overall, it turns out that your code is much more concise at the end, comparing to Java code. Okay, now we've finished with the uh, conciseness, and uh, I want to move to another big part of this modern language, is safety. Uh, so, uh, what? There's a very common problem. Okay, then. An error. Okay, so who is already familiar? With, so who thinks he knows what I'm going to talk about? Okay, that's that's great. It it makes things easier for me. So uh, here, what, what what's our problem? Here's uh, there is some problem, and uh, uh, there there was null pointer exception, and uh, we press details, but it shows us no like no description. Because we, we don't know what was it. And uh, uh, Sir Tony Har, several years ago, he, uh, he, uh, he, said he called the, his invention of null reference a billion dollar mistake because it's just impossible to count how much money did we overall spend on fixing such null pointer exceptions. And the modern approach nowadays 
it's not the Kotlin invention. It's not. Uh, uh, it's 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 tr it's true for all these languages, even Java 8 to some extent. So the modern approach is to make this null pointer exception uh, not a runtime exception, not a, an error that you th that throw that happens at runtime, but a compile time error. So we want to prevent it when you write code, not when you execute it. And uh, who knows what's their solution for this problem, for example, in, in Scala and Java 8? Yeah, so we have optional types, yes. Uh, but in Kotlin, we, we propo propose another solution to the same thing, and then we'll, we'll be able to compare it. So in Kotlin, we have so-called nullable types. Again, who, who have heard? about this concept, some of you, okay? If you're familiar, for example, with the Swift language, they use the same concept, so it might be useful to learn it now. After that, you, you will be able to say, oh yeah, I know how nullable types work in, in both these languages. So what's the general idea? Uh, we, if you declare a variable with just a regular type, uh, it says that this, it means that this variable cannot contain null. So you cannot uh, assign null to this string variable. So to be able to do that, you have to declare it with a special type, a type with a question mark, and that will mean, yes, you can do that. Okay, so if we, can, we want to access the first variable, is it possible? Is it possible from the point of view of the compiler? Is it safe? Yes, yes, for sure. No, no, nothing can happen here. Nothing bad can happen here. Okay, but if we want to access the second one, what's going on? Yes, it's unsafe because it can contain null. So the compiler forbids us this invocation. And it made us to use some other ways to access this variable. So this is how compiler prevents the possible errors later at runtime. And in Kotlin, we have a bunch of few useful uh, ways how to work with uh, these nullable types. And uh, uh, this, oh, so of course, at first, we can, uh, we can check this variable directly for being not null, and then access it, and uh, the compiler allows us to, to do that. So after checking, you're free to, uh, to access it. But uh, we can do better. And uh, you can access it via question mark, dot. It's safe access. It's called safe access. It's not a Kotlin invention either. If I'm not mistaken, it was stolen from the Groovy language. Does anyone know Groovy language? OK, some of you, 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 can, you can admit, yes, Groovy, there is the similar concept. So that means if s is null, pre please return me null as a result. If s is not null, return length. So it's much more concise, and uh, it expresses the same concept as before. And what is the result type of this invocation of this calling length? Yes, yes, so it's just nullable type. The result type will be int that in question mark, that means that null can be, can be there. And uh, if you want, you can, for example, in this case, provide the default value. This is called Elvis operator, and that means if this if the expression is null, please return me zero. So you see, there are quite useful ways how to cope with these nullable types, with these expressions of nullable types. You can do uh, more. You can, for example, the Kotlin uh, this analysis in uh, built in the compiler is quite smart. So, for example, you can check if the vari vari variable is null, and then uh, call the function that can only throw an, ex throw an exception. And in this case, the compiler knows again that afterwards you can, you can check, you can access it directly. And of course, you can throw null pointer exception explicitly if you really want. So this means throw null pointer exception if it's null. And uh, this is different from the Swift syntax. So in Swift, they have the similar concept, but they use one exclamation mark to, access the, to, to throw null pointer exception. And uh, we use two exclamation mark, saying just something like, please try to not use it. So try to avoid this construct, try to use uh, safer constructs, but if you really need, 
if you are sure, you, 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 can, you can do that. But now it's explicitly written that yes, here might be a problem. It's much easier to, to see it later. Okay, now uh, you might be interested in, okay, but how it is implemented under the hood? So what, 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 what will it have at runtime, for example? Will it work like option types with this and create a wrapper for every nullable types? Or is it implemented differently? And uh, the thing is that these nullable types are implemented just using annotations. So at runtime, you do not have wrappers for every object that you create. So when you declare nullable types, the compiler knows at compiler time we have this annotation, uh, we have this nullable type, but at runtime when you create this object, it's just a regular object of a regular class without, with no wrappers. And that is, uh, I would say that's uh, very important, for example, for Android, because there everyone really thinks a lot about performance of an application, and if for every nullable types it would create an, an extra wrapper, it would be it would be terrible. Now the next topic, the last one, the most complicated one, about expressiveness, about what what do we mean? Well, when we say that the language is expressive. I would say that generally it's about being able to write better code at the end, more beautiful code, to, to be able to create more abstractions, avoid duplications, etc. So it's, it's to, some, to some sense it's a bit of a philosophical question here. So we all want to be better developers and uh, these new approaches give us more, just more power to, to implement what we want. And I will show you some specific features of the Kotlin language that allow us to do better, to be better as expre at expressing us. And uh, these features will be extension functions, lambdas, and lambdas with receivers. Who thinks uh, he might be familiar with these extension functions thing? So for example, if you know C sharp, it's the same concept. So who is, okay. Uh, who have heard about lambdas or used them? Okay, most of you. And uh, I would say that uh, the most probably you are unfamiliar with the last concept because it's the one truly invented inside Kotlin. So it wasn't stolen from any other great language. And uh, will and uh, for me, it's one of the most difficult features in Kotlin. And uh, I would say it's a good thing that even in an in introduction to Kotlin talk, I can cover the most difficult feature. That means that overall the language is not as difficult as some other very nice DVM languages, not Java. Okay, so let's start with this first one, extensions functions. And uh, what's what's what it is? So uh, there is a very common pattern when you want to uh, create util functions, for example, util methods for a class. And uh, there, is an, there is this string function in Java, but it lacks a bunch of useful methods that we want to have there. And uh, uh, I would say in every project there was some util string library, some library that just contains uh, util class with these uh, methods, but having string as a first argument. So if you want to like to, to use last char, you can create a static function that takes string as the first parameter and use it in your code. And uh, in Kotlin to, to do the same thing, you can declare it as extension function. It just, it's not, uh, it cannot change the string class. So string class lives inside JVM. We, we, do not we do not have an access to that. But we would like to be able to, to, to add a bunch of useful methods. And uh, you can uh, declare it declare as the function. So with fun keyword, we declare a function in Kotlin. So programming in Kotlin is really, uh, <laughs> gives you lots of fun. Uh, so this, and this receiver uh, is just the function you extend, and uh, this reference inside the function refers to string. So you can access string reference by this. 
And uh, you can omit, as usual for this reference, you can omit it, and you just have this code. So it's the same declaration, but without explicit this. Okay, so why, why do we want to declare it in this way? In Kotlin, you can call an extension function as it was a member, after the dot. And uh, this code looks much simpler, much more, like, much nicer than the one with the explicit static function take, taking string as a first argument. And what's more, it is visible in completion. So when you want to know what util functions do you have for this class, you just call the completion and you uh, can scroll all the list, uh, seeing members as well as extensions in one list, and it's really very convenient. Uh, so, uh, we have to import this uh, static, this extension function all the time when, when we use it. So there is, it's, it's different, for example, for, it's different, for example, for C sharp, because uh, here, if you want to to be able to use this, you you have to import it. You 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 just cannot use wherever extensions you have in your project. You you have the power to control this. And for example, if you have an extension with a different name, you can you can change uh, the name on import, for, for example. Okay, and uh, you can import it it's like uh, every all the content on the project as well. Uh, so let's see. So I've told you that okay, the Kotlin can be very easily mixed with Java code. So then you should ask here. So how would you call this extension function from Java? Because I told you this this very easy to call Kotlin code from Java. So yes, please, please examples. And uh, what do you think will be here? Basically. This extension function in Java, from Java point of view, and from in bytecode actually, is just a regular static function that taking string as a first parameter. That's it. So I started with this pattern that is very common in many, many projects that you have like, this list of util functions. And in Kotlin under the hood, it's totally the same. So you just... You just, uh, there's a special class that, that is generated by the file name when you declare this function, and under the hood, it's a regular static function. Okay, then I have, uh, yes, and from Java you can, all, uh, of course, use static import and it looks like a regular Java code. So when you use Kotlin from Java, it looks, it looks like Java, that's it. Okay, so then I have a question to you. What do you think? Is it possible to call private member of string from an extension function to string? That's, that's the place where you have to think. Yes. No. Who, who thinks, yes, it's possible? My right hand, no one agrees with my, okay. And uh, who thinks it's not possible? Yeah. And uh, my left has one was right, actually, because it's not possible, because it's a regular static function under the hood. So can you call private member of string from a static function, from regular Java function? No, because you do not have this access to the, to the string class. And the same works with extensions. So you see, we do not change class. We, we, do not, we just do regular thing that you all do every time when you create util functions, but in, an, in a more nice way, in a more, in a, but in the way that is uh, easy to read. Okay, let's move on. And uh, ah, I have some examples for Android environment. Who are here Android developers? Some of you. Okay, so I'll be, I, I'll try to be rather fast with it. So, uh, in Android, there is a regular way to, to show you the some message in a screen. So, like, you did something. And uh, uh, this uh, method uses this reference. Uh, you see? And in Kotlin, there is a standard or uh, Java way to do this. In Kotlin, we can, you, we can do it in a more concise fashion. And uh, for uh, for all of you, it's important to understand that this, I'll sh I sh I'm, sure, I'm trying to show you the pattern. 
The part in how you can use extensions to improve the readability of your code. And you can do the same thing with uh, almost every environment you work with. So it's not the, the pipeline is not specific for Android. It just illustrates how it's done there. So there is this long way and there is a short way, but how, how we achieve that? Basically, this refers to an activity. And so you can call this, to you can call this toast only when you're in, in the context of an, of an activity, yes? And uh, in Kotlin, we can declare an extension function on activity that does the same thing. And then, as usually for this reference, we can omit it, and we have this concise syntax. And again, this, uh, there's a pattern that works everywhere, and uh, it explains how uh, extension functions can be useful to improve readability of your code. So I have more uh, complex concept in Java then, but then you can try to try to make it more concise in Kotlin. Another example, uh, very similar. We just have uh, this. We can rewrite this starting new activity in Kotlin. But, so it is very very simple as well, but it is a pattern that Android developers have to repeat over and over again when they want to start a Kotlin activity. And if it is quite simple, so it's, if it contains only like several parameters, etc., then you can rewrite it in Kotlin in a simpler fashion. And uh, you see that it's, it's just an extension function on activity. So it hides the context and it's quite usable. And another thing, you maybe remember this, this too. And in Kotlin 2 is extension function as well. Okay, it can be like something a bit more trickier. So uh, who feels confident with generics in Java? To some extent, okay. So uh, everyone else, you can just ignore the types. But the thing is that we can declare this extension function on any type, and it just returns you a pair of object. So that's how we create a pair in Kotlin, with, the, with this use too. And uh, this infix word means that you can, <coughs> uh, you can use it in infix form without dot and parenthesis. And uh, why two? And that's because we have, this is a common way to create a map in Kotlin, and it just, uh, D gives you a correspondence between key and value. Another thing, lambdas. So I think most of you have heard of lambdas that uh, gives you an, uh, like a lot of power to change the way you write your code every day. That's really easy, yes, I agree. Uh, so this is an example of lambda. And uh, uh, from the some perspective, you can just think of Lambda as an anonymous class. So every time when you create an anonymous class in Java, you can write the same concept in Kotlin. So uh, you see here, we have this onclick listener that just uh, somehow reacts when you click a button, and uh, it has a view as an argument, and uh, you, can, uh, you can write explicitly this view in uh, Lambda as well, but you can omit it if you want. So here's the same thing. You just, you just give the, the code. And overall, Lambdas help you to, to cut out a lot of verbosity from, from your code. All these just anonymous classes, creations, and so on. And another thing that in Kotlin, you do not have to to rewrite this set on click listeners. So this method is from Java, and it takes a listener as a parameter. But it co in Kotlin, you just can pass a lambda instead, and uh, the compiler will do all the conversions automatically. Okay, but lambdas are useful not only when, when you use anonymous classes. It really uh, can help to simplify our work with collections. Uh, so let's say we have a list, a list of employees, and uh, we are interested in what's an average age of employees in Prague. So JetBrains has an office in Prague, but it's very small actually. Uh, who, so just at first think how you would write this code in Java. 
Yes, in uh, Java prior to Java 8. Who knows uh, how to uh, how to express this concept uh, using like uh, using lambdas? Who is familiar with it? To some extent. Okay, so, so some of you. So uh, this so this I, I will cover it on this slide, but actually it's a big topic, and there are lots of books covering like how to manipulate collections in a better way using lambdas. There are very many books covering it for Java 8. So and it helps greatly. So what we can do, we can focus on our question and uh, do it in turn. At first we have this city, Prague. So let's say we want to filter and uh, leave only those employees who, are, who work in Prague. So this thing, this filter and lambda and the predicate will return us only, tho only those who live in Prague. Then, and uh, in Kotlin, the full form of this lambda will be this one. So just a function that takes employee and returns whether it works in this city or not, in, in this case in Prague or not. And uh, it, uh, Kotlin allows you, allows you to, to name this argument by it, if it's the, if it's the only on one argument. So you can uh, do this, and filter function will, will leave only those elements that satisfy this predicate. So should, I, I think that should be clear that, that what, what, what's going on here. Uh, and then we can focus in the next thing, age. So you see there is a list of employees, but we are interested in their ages. So we can do, okay, let, give me just their ages. Yes, and uh, this thing again, it's the full form. And uh, at last, finally, we can focus on what they ask us for, average. And of course, in Kotlin, you can, you can do that. And this average, as well as filter map, are again, just an extension functions in Kotlin. So <clears throat> you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, Kotlin uh, can be compiled, can be used with Java 6. So Java 6 is the target version. And uh, I've told you already that we do not create our own collection libraries. So these employees, this list will be, uh, re will be a regular Java list under the hood, yes? But we, you see, even in Java 6, you can use these new methods, filter and map, and uh, we provide them as an extensions. So these functions, all three functions, are again an extensions of the Java collection library, standard library. And that's why the Kotlin library is just Java standard library and a bunch of extensions, like filter, map, average, etc. You see, I hope you see the whole picture. <clears throat> okay, but then, yes? Yes, we have our own way to uh, to invoke the pro so uh, this uh, case you you won't have the lazy iteration, so uh, these operations will be um, will be implemented immediately. So you will create so uh, they so in a filter if in stream if you say just filter that uh, uh, until you call some terminate operation, the result won't be computed. In Kotlin, that's not the, the case. So this filter will return you the result immediately. However, if you want to work with uh, this approach, we can, the similar called, uh, to, to streams, they called sequences. And if you target Java 8, you can use streams as well. And uh, there is important thing uh, to your question, because actually, especially people who, for example, Android developers and others who just cannot use Java 8 for now, and Java JVM 8 backend, I think, a, a virtual machine, I, I mean, they may ask, okay, so for this simple operation, uh, is it true that the compiler will create three anonymous classes for me? Because it's like, what? <laughs> In terms of performance, like this, this a very simple thing to do, but but three anonymous classes will be will be like very it will be really bad in, in the terms of performance, and uh, actually that's not what's happening here. We can inline 
lambdas and their code, and there will be no performance overhead. So when you call filter, the result code will just be the implementation of filter with their substitute code for lambdas. So the main thing is that there is no performance overhead. No anonymous class is created under the hood for so w when it's possible. So for, for 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 functions that can be inlined. So if you work with Java that expects anonymous class, of course we have to provide an anonymous class there. But if it's just a filter function, you can safely use it in terms of performance because no additional overhead, no additional overhead is hidden. Okay, so now there is another, <coughs> my last concept. How many time? Have, hmm? mm -hmm. Thank you. So there is my last concept. And uh, as I've said already, it's one of the most complicated things in Kotlin. So basically it's very, it's very easy. So we have this concept of extension functions. I hope you're familiar with it. You got familiar with it to some extent. You have this concept of lambdas. I think you, it should be clear what's going on. And so you mix these two concepts and you have lambda with receiver. So is it clear now? Almost, yeah. Okay, please give us some more details. Yes, yes, let's, let's, look, at, let's look at it. Uh, let's start with an example. Yes. Uh, so here we create string builder. Yes, uh, please just read this code. It's, 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 uh, it's very easy to understand what's going on. So we have string builder, we append some, some, something there, and we print the result. We have the result. Yes, what's, what's, what's the problem? We would like to maybe eliminate some verbosity. What's the verbosity? We have to repeat string builder for several times, this variable, yes? So it's not a problem if it's just two letters, but I would say in a regular program it will be uh, honestly string builder or something else that you create, so it wouldn't be so nice. And uh, in some other languages, and in Kotlin, you can use with for this purpose. So you just say with string builder, and then you can access all the methods as you are in a context of string builder. Yes, so I think that should be quite quite clear. Yes? So what's going on? You just eliminate this string builder for several times, and now you can only one usage of this variable, and uh, everyone else is hidden. Okay, so uh, I would say that in Python they have the similar concept. It's a language construct, so it might be not new to you, to, to new to for you. But the most interesting thing in this slide is its hidden, because. In Kotlin, with is not a built-in construct. It's a function from standard library. So in this language, you can create with as, as, as a function. And again, it's, it's about expressiveness. So uh, we try to provide abstract solutions. So you, you, you are able to, you, you have lots of power as a, as a library developer, as a library creator, you, you can create these this, such things, and you can extend this for, for your domain and uh, create something like, not, not, not generally D sales, but something that looks very, very close to your domain. So, uh, let's return to the example. Okay, so this is a function, so how it works. Uh, you see, uh, actually, uh, this is hidden here. I oh, know, let's start with this thing. So we see the function, and uh, this is these curly braces, actually. They mean lambda. So lambda in Kotlin usually goes in curly braces. Yes? No, not usually. Always goes in curly braces. And in this example, lambda is, goes in curly braces as well. And another thing that I would say uh, is the same in the Groovy language, if lambda is last argument of your function invocation, you can so-called move it out of the parentheses. So you see, this is another way to call this function. Uh, sorry, like, my, I'm sorry, like minus five, I told like, like I'm five minutes after I, well, I should end. So we have five, yeah, we have five minutes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's good that it's not minus five minutes. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have this uh, lambda, and it's another way to call it. Yes, it's a typical way, but 
because of this syntactic sugar in the language, because you can move it out of the parentheses, you can write this and it will mean the same thing. So again, with, with is a function where string builder is the first argument and lambda is the second one. And uh, this is an implicit receiver in this lambda. So you saw extension functions and in extension functions, in the body of extension function leaves this reference. Yes, and uh, the same goes with this lambda with the receiver. So this lambda leaves this reference. And as usual for this reference, you can omit it and you just see the, this concise syntax, what, what we saw before. Okay, then maybe, maybe you need more time to, maybe you have some questions for this example something to think about. So uh, I want to, in the next slide, I want to show you this, how, how with function is declared actually. So again, you can ignore the types for now, if you prefer. So basically, with function has two arguments, two parameters. The first one is the receiver, string builder, in the example before, yes. And the second one is uh, lambda. So in Kotlin, we say it's a variable of extension uh, of function type, but it's not regular function type, it's extension function type. And uh, that means you can call this similar to you call extension functions. So it should remind you how, how you call extension function, this block. Yeah, so it is a variable of, the, of, of this type, extension function. And uh, you can, after, afterwards you can call this with, with, uh, uh, with implicit this, and uh, inside it lambda it can be omitted. And uh, it turns out that this pattern, of course, you, have, you, you, you should uh, take some time to process it in your head, how it, how it looks like, play with it uh, in some examples. Sorry, I gave you this introduction to the, really the most difficult concept in Kotlin, but then you can, and uh, I, I've tried to show you how expressive you can be with this, and uh, what do we mean by calling the language expressive? But uh, basically, you can do really nice tricks with this function. So it's an example from a good Android talk one. And uh, in this case, the scenario is, the, there is a typical scenario. When you uh, work with the database, you have to begin transaction, you have to do something, and afterward, end transaction in a try friendly block. Uh, but what you can do in Kotlin, you can see that, you see, there is a lot of code duplication because for every action, you have to repeat this, all these try friendly block, all these actions. And you have, you have to repeat this pattern every time for every operation with your database. And in Kotlin, we want just to, to hide this pattern somewhere in a function and just leave what, what's different. In this case, delete method. And we can do it indeed in Kotlin, in this thing. And uh, actually it can be done with the regular lambda, with lambda with receiver, as in this example. And it is just a lambda. It looks like some building construct, but it's not. It's regular lambda and it's a regular function vacation. And uh, you, ha you, you see that you can eliminate all the repetitive code, all the duplication, and just express what you're really go trying to say. And in this example, uh, you, you can ask again. So say, there is lambda. Maybe anonymous class is created under the hood. Yes? So in this case, it would be, it would be disastrous again, because if for everything you, you should create anonymous class. But that's not how it works. Uh, as I told you, lambdas can be inlined, functions can be inlined, and they can inline the body of the lambda as well. And uh, in this case, uh, you can declare it as inline function, and in bytecode, it will have absolutely the same what you would write by hand. So you see there is a pattern that helps you to avoid the duplication, but on the other hand, it gives no performance overhead. So it just does the same thing. Okay, I think I will leave these Android things 
uh, because we have one more minute left, and uh, or minus one. And uh, there is so uh, if you want to play around with Kotlin, there is a Kotlin site, and uh, there is uh, you can play with Kotlin online if you do not if you're too lazy to install a plugin, etc. And uh, there is this Kotlin cons. Maybe you saw in Twitter something like, yeah, I finished Corans. Yes, it's played. So uh, it's uh, 42 tasks, small tasks, that you, can, uh, that you can accomplish, that you can fix. And uh, after these 42 tasks, I, I'm sure that you will, you, will be very, you will feel very familiar with this concept louder with receiver and uh, other content stuff. So it, it covers lots of features of the language. And another thing, uh, this is my main project for today, is the book. It's not finished yet, but you can buy it already. That hard works. And uh, there is a discount code, but it is, co it is presented constantly on site, so you just have to, if you will be interested someday, you just have to know that it exists. Uh, we have a community in Slack. There is... Like uh, maybe someone is to, someone is in Slack, content Slack. Okay, others can join and uh, and see uh, there is there is it's it's quite alive. So now Slack is is very popular and uh, Kotlin is popular as well. So let me together. So thank you very much. Have a nice Kotlin. And thank you.